welcome to Come Home. It's such a delight to be with you today. You know, God always is speaking. He always has something so precious and powerful to, to say to us if we're only listening. You know, a lot of times I talk about coffee and I do a coffee joke or a coffee quote. Let me tell you why. Because coffee is this warm, yummy drink. And I equate coffee usually with my quiet time with the Lord. When you're first waking up and you're just uh, starting to talk to Father and you're just inviting Him into your day when you're speaking to Him. And so coffee is really a huge part of my devotional time. And that is why, one of the reasons why I love it so much. So cheers to you. So today we have a precious guest, uh, not just a guest, but I get to say every once in a while that who is on the program is also a friend. I so love this woman. I admire her. I am enthralled with her. She is such a bundle of joy and life. I don't think I've ever seen her sad, upset, or mad. She just has this beautiful walk with Jesus. She is uh, so creative, artistic, musical. She's a farmer. Most of all, she is an intercessor. She is a worshiper. But I think that she loves to be called mom, wife, and daughter of God the most. And what we're going to talk about today for all of the moms out there and grandmothers and women that have little guys, we're going to talk about her book, her curriculum that she birthed as a labor of love. I was one of the ones that got to be a midwife and a prayer warrior over this project. So to see the completed work is incredible. God's so faithful when he calls you to do something. But gather around, let people know. If you're looking for something for family devotions to teach your children homeschooled or in Christian or public school, you're going to love what she is going to tell you about today. She brings such wisdom about the seven portions of our spirit and how they can be activated. And so make sure that you tune in, stay tuned to meet the delightful, amazing Nancy Conwell. Now let's go to this. Thank you so much, Jen. I am so excited to share with you today about the biblical feasts and in particular, the Feast of Rosh Hashanah. Many of us maybe have heard the word Rosh Hashanah, maybe you saw it in the Hallmark Bookstore, Happy New Year, but you wondered, what is Rosh Hashanah? Well, first of all, before we even share on the biblical feasts, I want you to know the biblical feasts are not just about dancing and singing and celebrating. I want you to know that they are personal, powerful, prophetic, and relevant. And Jesus died on the cross. He also, when he died on the cross, gave us inheritance to those biblical feasts. Now, beloved saints, that means that along with Israel, according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11, we are also engrafted in and we are partakers with Israel. We do not replace Israel, but we are, we are participants with Israel through the blood of Jesus to receive all the benefits and blessings that God has given us through the biblical feasts. First of all, I want you to know that the biblical feasts are not of this world. As a matter of fact, we see the biblical feasts inscribed in creation. I call it God's revelation inscribed in creation. We see the biblical feasts itemized for us and listed in the Seder, in the order of the book of Genesis chapter one in the story of creation. But today I wanna focus just for a moment about the supernatural seasons and how when God created time, he created time into two dimensions. Let's look at the word of God to see this. In Genesis chapter one, looking at verse 14, the Bible says, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons for days and for years. Notice the time is divided. 
for signs and for seasons is the first purpose of time. The second purpose of time is for days and for years. So God created the sun and the moon by which we keep time on earth, the moon 24 hour periods, and the sun for 365 days a year. God said, let them be for signs and for seasons, for days and for years. Rosh Hashanah is the beginning of the biblical new year. You may say, why does it start in the seventh month? It is because God ordains for us to know that it begins Seven is a symbol that actually shows us God stopping cycles, God beginning something fantastic and new in our lives. But more than that, we need to see that it begins a new supernatural season in our life, a time when we take possession over the oppression of the enemy. You say, how does that happen? One of the most powerful Rosh Hashanahs in the entire Bible is found in Genesis chapter 22. When, when Abraham was tested, he went to Mount Moriah and the Bible tells us God did test him. And he said to the Lord, here I am, meaning Hanini, I'm here to do your will. But I want you to know as a result of Abraham's obedience to God, you and I, as descendants of Abraham, the Bible tells us that the Gentiles might be partakers of the promise through Christ. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 3, verse 29, if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What promise? The promise God gave Abraham at the time of the binding of Isaac on the altar. God needed his yes. And as a result of his obedience, God gave him a promise. And you know what that promise was? That your seed, he said to Abraham in Genesis 22, verse 17, your seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. You say, how does that apply to my life? Rosh Hashanah is the time of victory. Rosh Hashanah is the time that you possess the gates of your enemies. And how do we know that that Akita, that binding of Isaac on the altar was a Rosh Hashanah? Do you remember that God provided a ram and that the ram was caught in the thicket by its horn? The ram's horn is the sign of Rosh Hashanah. And when it is sounded, God remembers the promise that he made to Abraham, your seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. I want you to know, no matter what battle you're in, no matter what principalities and powers want to come against you, this Rosh Hashanah, receive the anointing, receive the victory that God has promised us in Christ. You shall possess the gates of your enemies. Thank you so much. Wasn't that spectacular? That was Dr. Michelle Correll, and she is an absolute expert and a theologian when it comes to the feasts and festivals. Now, it's a special time because we are celebrating the feasts of the Lord. Leviticus 23 says to do them forever. And there's such a richness that comes when we understand them and see the fulfillment of Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, in them. Now, Today's show lines completely up with that because our beautiful guest and my friend Nancy Conwell has taken so much of her teaching uh, and related it back to our Hebraic roots. So you're going to love what she brings today. Nancy, thank you. Thank you for being here, thank darling, you. darling. Thank you. <laughs> so yes. you are, uh, you've been married to Dawn for 44 years. You are a mother of four, mm -hmm. a nana of five, mm -hmm. and then you are a spiritual mother to so many, Nancy. You, you have such a mama's heart. And you also have dozens and dozens of fur babies on the farm, ducks and cows. Yep, critters, chickens. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, lo I love coming to Shiloh Farms. 
And you know, uh, Nancy and her husband uh, have a ministry, a place of peace, and a house of prayer where they welcome men and women of God, missionaries, evangelists to come for just refuge and, and shalom. And they've just dedicated their whole property to the glory of God. My son got married there. We dedicated my, my grandbaby there. So thank you yes. for saying yes to the Lord in so many areas. Yes, we want a place of refuge yes. where people can find rest. Well, you have provided it, and many um, have been recipients, and great shall be your reward. Yeah. Okay, so today we're going to talk about this incredible book that you have created, Curriculum. And it's not just a storybook for children, but it's a parent's guide for the moms or homeschooling teachers. Mm -hmm. And then you also have an incredible book with activities and exercises and resources and notes. I mean, it is packed. Uh, I could just camp out in there for months with all the links you've given and, and the support. So I want us to share today, and I want you to just say how God told you to do this, the vision for it, and then how others can get this and then incorporate it in their family devotions or in their school devotions. Mm -hmm. So share, share, share. Every mom and dad needs to know who they are in Jesus Christ. We need to have a real strong sense of, I'm happy to be me. I like being me and I like the way God created me. But that doesn't come unless the Holy Spirit opens up the heart and tells us who we are. So God gave me the uh, unction, the little push, to start studying the rainbow, Noah's rainbow in Genesis 8 and 9. And from there, I was noticing, you know, God spoke seven words to Noah. And when you, when you start looking at the seven days of creation, which I put right here, and the seven prophetic gifts in Romans 12, and seven furnishings of the tabernacle, all these seven, seven spirits of God, seven words of Jesus on the cross, seven letters to the churches in Revelation. I, 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 I'm a graph person. I love to make graphs. I love to make charts. And so I started trying to study and understand the Feast of the Lord and how does, how does knowing Jesus and the Feast of the Lord, how does that all fit together? So God was just guiding me little by little. And I think that he has a plan for cultivating our maturity, for revealing our identity, for helping us get happy about who we are as his lampstands. So a lampstand has seven candles, another seven. The menorah. The menorah. <laughs> you know, the menorahs in Israel yes. always marked the places of worship. And so the menorah is seven candles, and it reflects the image of Jesus Christ. Think about it. Jesus said, I'm the lampstand of the world. Don't hide your lampstand under a bushel. He kept talking about the lamp being the spirit of man. Now, in America, where we are, we usually say, I'm, Jesus is the light of the world. But Jesus spoke Hebrew. And when we think of light, we think of one light, right? You know, like change the light bulb. Jesus was saying, you have seven beautiful parts that I want to connect with you in seven ways. I want to be for you truth. I want to show you how to be a servant. I want to show you you're a teacher. And we might say, oh, I can't be all of those things. But Jesus said, well, I am, and you're, you're like me. I'm your mirror. You know, when we look at Jesus, it's like looking in a mirror. So when we cultivate this beautiful menorah, and if I can just show you kind of something that I think is really interesting. Oh, my candles are flopping. Show me. The way the menorah was made. Now think, God designed this menorah. He gave it to Moses. So when God was teaching Moses about the seven portions of the spirit, which he knew we would unravel um, later, but the, the menorah, Candle one connected with candle seven. That is prophet connected with servant. With, pardon me, with mercy. Aww. Prophet and mercy 
Have you ever heard of speaking the truth in love? Yeah, that connects the prophet and the mercy. Yep, and here's day two connected with day six. This is servant connected with ruler. Mm. Have you heard of servant leadership? Yeah. Day three and day five are connected. This is the, the teacher and the giver connected. They're both related to times and seasons. When you think about what God did on that third day of creation, He was making all of the beautiful trees and leaves and plants. That is a seasonal thing. It's timing. Yeah. And the giver is when God created the fish and the birds. So that's also seasons. You know, little fish don't bear fish all the time. You yes. know, there, it's seasonal times and seasons. So when you get into maturity studies, you're looking to the Lord. This is a very important aspect, knowing times and seasons. Yes. And the middle candle is exhorter, which is that bright light. <laughs> the yellow one. Bright light, <laughs> yep. And that's when God made the sun, moon, and stars. Aww. He's saying that is who you are. I made you to be all of these things, but parents are the ones who cultivate the portions of the Spirit by blessing the Spirit. So unless a mom and dad know and see the child as they are made in the image of God, this is the DNA of God. This is who He's designed you to be. If parents don't know that and know how to speak to it, cultivate that blessing, yeah. The child won't know that they're a menorah. They, they won't see their beautiful parts. The and that is where uh, in, in Judaism, uh, they bless their children yes. every Friday night yes. before Shabbat meal. Yes. The, the father and mother lay hands on their children. They bless their sons and they bless their daughters. And Nancy, in, in the American church, we really haven't been taught that. Right. And so I love this teaching that you're bringing yes. and helping families go back to the biblical model of blessing. It, it is. I've got sample blessings right in here. I've got a lot of sample um, exercises for families to do together. But one of these things, one of the pages, I'll find it here, is just a bright, how do you bless the portions of a child's spirit? And uh, the child is going to get used to this blessing. They're going to yeah. love being blessed. Yep. I, Nancy, I love that the book is so bright and easy to read. And the book just comes alive. It, it is such a beautiful book. I think everyone should have it. And you gave uh, so many examples of how to do this. Yeah. So talk to... talk. It, how does this look in a family environment today? How, how does bringing this uh, and, and blessing the lampstand, how, how does that look like? Well, I just want to encourage the moms and dads to think about the pattern that God had for their life. I mean, all over the scriptures, you see patterns. Yes. You know, you see these, these uh, like uh, hidden tapestries almost. Yes. So as a mom and dad get to know and do this with themselves first and really start exploring the portions of their spirit and mom and dad bless each other. Yes. They're going to get to know who they are in Christ and then they'll be able to effectively teach all the other pieces of the puzzle. You know, it's just fascinating to see the themes that travel, that go throughout these sevens. Because God's a God of order. He is. And he, he doesn't want us to be left unformed like clay that is neglected and just thrown aside. He is so particular. And you're his love, lovely lump of clay. <laughs> and he is just going to work on you and sculpt and, and, you know, blow on you. And he's not neglecting his kids. So it's a very active process, and, and for parents to really take this to heart, this is kingdom parenting. You're right. You're getting your child ready for the kingdom of God. You're right. So it's not going to be the typical family. There's going to be a commitment to say, you know what, we're going to lay aside all the entertainment, the distractions, because we're going to really focus on relationships, character building, joy bonding. We're gonna, there's a bunch of exercises in here. And 
so you can focus with your family on what really matters and you will be sowing good seed. Those kids are going to grow up and be like mighty oaks of righteousness. Um, I, well, I just want to say that the parents, if, if whatever mom and dad are doing, they're like the trees of righteousness. And the kids will get it as long as mom and dad are rooted and grounded down here That's together. Good. You know, the, the, the who you are the substance of Jesus Christ is flowing upward yes. in you. And it's going to impact the kids. It will. That's the way God designed it. And wow. one of the things in the parent guide, because there's a parent guide that you wrote to go uh, with the storybooks yes. for the children. Also, uh, any of you that are interested, the storybooks uh, are done in different nationalities. They're done in different languages. And so if you have someone that, you know, a, that lives overseas or if your grandchildren, you know, you can select the nationality and the language that you want. And I appreciate that you did that. So when children open the book, they can find themselves. Yes. And because they're unique and they're precious. But in the parent guide, you have the exercise where the parent identifies what they are and when they understand where their strength is in this lampstand, then they're able to see it in their children. Yes. So I appreciate that you're getting the whole family involved. Yes, yes. We don't want any child left out. You know, there we you want go. all the children to speak. One of the things, one of the ways this can happen is if you just practically take like three or five minutes, because if you've got little kids, they're not going to sit for long. Everybody gather in the living room and let the kids all lay on each other, you know, hug each other, bring their stuffed animals, stroke, touch, put on the quiet worship music, and have them just listen to one song. Yeah. And then after that one song, open it up and say, hey, what are you sensing from God right now? What do you think he wants us to know? That's so important because now that was simple and you're teaching busy parents on overload an easy way to cultivate and invite the presence of God. That's right. That's right. And as, as parents are aware, say, of this prophet, for instance, this prophet part of your heart, you, know, you think about that first day of creation when God separated light from dark. Let there be. Let there be light. And there was also darkness. There was, you know, he was separating. That's what that prophet part of your heart is designed to do, is to separate truth from lies, uh, right from wrong. And so when your little child comes home from school or, or is, you know, how little children assess people around them, and they'll say, Miss Smith, you know, gosh, she can't get anything right. You know, she didn't even know how to help us line up in a straight line or, you know, they could be critical. Yes. As a parent, if I'm wanting to cultivate that prophet heart, I'm going to, instead of just saying, can't you find anything good to say about Miss Smith? What if we said, you know what, honey bear, you might be right about Miss Smith. She might be a little bit confused or overwhelmed. Let's ask God. Let's just pray right now. That's so Let's good. Let's ask God to show us what we can think and pray for about for Miss Smith. Yes. And that way it turns it where the child's not feeling like, you know, I'm the judge and everything I say is perfect. You know, that's not it. But it's that, it, that we're learning how to turn our attention to Jesus and call on Jesus yes. from the first. We're just learning how to pray about everything. You reframed it so well. Nancy, what about the moms, their children are out of the house and they're listening to you and they're going, I didn't do any of that. I, I was the judge. I didn't have any of these tools in my toolbox, um, raising Christian uh, little ones. And what can I do now? I would, you know, I, I didn't have these tools in my toolbox when I was young either. And I, I did, I made a ton of mistakes. Thank God that our intentions count because we, we're stumbling along yes. as mothers. We don't always know. And God, thank the Lord. He's the restorer. Grace and mercy. Yeah. He's the restorer of everything. We, we call on him as to restore. But we can begin as we receive 
counsel from the Lord. And, you know, the seven spirits of God are, are there for us. He's the wonderful counselor. He is wisdom and knowledge and the fear of the Lord and timing. He knows how to help yes. us with timing. And uh, sometimes with our older children, we have to pray, especially, and just wait, 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 yes. and watch <laughs> yes. for God to just provide that, just that opportunity where we could maybe say one line. Yes. <laughs> and, and so, uh, you know, we're not in that everyday, day-to-day -day guiding place as we used to be. But if we get our act together and we're seeking the Lord and being Christ Jesus-centered, it's gonna, it's gonna come out. The wisdom is just gonna, it's yes. gonna slowly come out. You'll know how to like write a little card, send a little text yes. every now and then in the Lord's timing. Yes. His timing, his, timing. his way. So, you know, God is, is restoring and he'll use, he'll use us as he we're will. tied to him. Yes. He's going to restore. He will. So Nancy, we only have a few minutes. This has been incredible. I hope everyone will go on. Uh, it's nanasrainbow.net. Yes. Nanasrainbow.net. You can see all of the resources there. She has a YouTube channel. She does bedtime stories that are so peaceful. But before we end the show, would you minister to wherever, however the yes. Lord leads you and just yes. speak life. And you can also get these books at printshopcentral.com. Okay, so, two, two different ways. Yes, yes. I just want to say to you moms, if you were not seen and heard by your children, by your parents, sorry, or your children, if you don't feel like you were really appreciated, just get in the habit of just going straight to Jesus. Let him define you. Let him cultivate maturity. Even now, in all the portions of your spirit, he will bless you. And you can find blessings for your spirit online. And I've got them on my website. But the Lord bless you in all the beautiful parts of your heart. Most of you moms naturally are, many of you are servants. And you're kind, merciful, compassionate people. So I just want to encourage you to let Jesus touch you and bring strength and cultivate that ruler, that part of you that says yes and no, so you don't get overtaxed because he's not a pushy, overworking, you know, Lord that's going to squash you. He wants to cultivate. He's a gentle shepherd. He's going to cultivate your ruler skills. You're the place where you will exhort and shine. He's going to comfort you. Um, he's going to comfort you in the deepest level. So I'm just so grateful that God is healing, yes. restoring all the mamas. Yes. And the daddies. Thank you, Nancy. We love you so much. And thank you for joining us today at Come Home. Go on Nancy's site. Get her things. You are a kingdom mom. You are a kingdom nana. You are a kingdom dad. And God is helping you.